Well, what we have here is an unidentified year wheel and power supply. Um, it looks like based upon the numbers on some of the components, we might be dealing with 1988. Um, we don't have a little sheet for it. And as you can see, someone has marked two outlets as good and two outlets as bad. And then when we take the old girl apart, we can see we got some Bernie Bernie marks, which might be why that outlet was bad. It's like someone had to go at that. And then it looks like someone repaired um, a trace on the board with some uh, some wire. And then down here, I don't know what's going on down there. And then right here, I don't know if you can see there's a hole through the board. Um, it's like we just, uh, looks like we burned right straight through there. And really that just is a jumper that doesn't really need connected. Uh, I mean, it needs connected, but it doesn't need any like electronics connected to it. It's just a wire. And then capacitors a little bit loose these capacitors tested okay they're rusty but they tested good um the fuse was blowing um and was melted into its container i replaced the fuse holder and also replaced an obvious short to ground um, right at the right at the board so I think we got that part under control I also don't understand some of the wire colorings here I don't know if they just got that discolored uh, this came out of a bar that was supposedly in service in New Mexico um, so it might have gotten pretty hot so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna address some issues and if we get it working, fingers crossed, then I'm going to install the rapid rate gray wire to enable rapid rate. And we'll see if we can't just run this thing without oil till it blows up or ends up self-lubricating, if you will. So that, that's what the project here is. Um, let's see where we get with it. Let's see what I, I think I'm gonna attack the hole, gaping hole in the board first. Turns out the gaping hole wasn't so much the problem as it was the connection it broke. So really once I got the connection that spanned it repaired, which again was just a wire, it wasn't a component, um, it actually seemed to fix the problem and the gaping hole was never actually addressed. I'm not sure what I would fill that with anyway. So we'll just call that a speed hole or a ventilation hole for now. Looking more closely at the burnt area, um, I think it may have had more to do with the power input and the main ground. Uh, whether it was a symptom or a cause, I never really forensically investigated that, but uh, once the component that it destroyed, which was again just a little uh, contact wire, uh, was resoldered and replaced. It seemed to solve the problem, and uh, I didn't really have to do anything further to this. It looks a lot worse than it is, and I think the short that caused it, or it caused, etc., was our problem. So the the gaping hole um, actually gave me some room to work. I was able to pinch the uh, contact down onto the solder trace and flow some solder onto it without contacting the uh, next closest contact, which it can't bridge to. Um, and it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. I, I thought this was gonna be extremely difficult, but uh, I also did a better job cleaning this one before uh, attacking it than I did some of the other portions, so that probably led to it. Um, and then also to speak to the exposed uh, copper colored area at the top, 
Um, it's really not actually a problem. It's just no longer insulated. Um, it got scraped clean. Um, and once it was scraped clean, it actually seemed to be uh, fine. So I just left it alone. I did not reapply any insulative coatings to the bottom of this supply. Um, plenty of older power supplies operate without it. So I just left it alone. As soon as I got this specific uh, part reconnected, I just called it a day. As far as that section's concerned anyway, um, I was pretty much done on that end of the board and I was free to move on to uh, some other, other more obvious problems. There's a few things that can cause the sort of burn marks that we saw um, from that outlet. Um, believe it or not, the most common is actually the outlet is loose and you're getting arcing between the um, hot and the ground. It's not that the uh, outlet itself is arcing to the metal board it's that they're arcing to each other and that's usually because the contacts are loose so what i'm doing here is i'm just making sure the uh, pins are soldered in super tight because these uh, wheel and strobe out, uh, outputs are really only held in by the soldered pins for the most part so that's why uh, the fix here is to resolder the pins at least as a first pass attempt at fixing At this point, I realized that I probably hadn't cleaned that enough. And so I went ahead and wicked up the solder I'd put down um, and wicked up some of that uh, melted protective wheel and coating and started over with my uh, attempt to solder this pin and the one next to it. Um, usually I go through and wick that stuff up ahead of time. Um, I thought I had done that uh, or I thought at least it was clean enough I wouldn't need to but I thought wrong so that's why the re-solder there. I would say 75 to 90 percent of the time when I hear a snapping sound, a popping sound, or there's arcing in a power supply, um, the actual output is to blame especially if it's one of this type uh, that's on the board um, instead of being a pigtail so seeing the burn mark on the mounting plate and um, having problems with uh, that sp specific outlet um, was a pretty telltale sign that we had just bad contacts um, which can just happen with age or from um, removing the plugs pulling on it, whatever. Um, also, there was some damage to the actual uh, trace on the board underneath it that I had to clean up, but uh, that part seemed to go pretty well. All right, so usually I like to fully reassemble these before testing them because the uh, The MOSFET right there, uh, it heat sinks to the, uh, heat sinks to this metal piece. Um, but eh, we're going to run this one up the flagpole because I'm not sure that it's really ready for prime time. It's important that if you ever pull one of these apart that you don't run it off the metal backing for more than say like maybe 30 seconds I don't know it's an arbitrary amount of time but you don't want that MOSFET to have no heat sink I guess is what I'm getting at which is a good way to cause it to fail and then you get to replace that but we can definitely check for sparking arcing infarcting quarking 
and all the other things that would make a power supply non-cromulent. Um, so we'll give that a quick go. We'll see if we get an immediate fuse blow, some sparking, what we get here. Um, I'm not holding out a lot of hope. Um, I think we've got some pretty deep issues with this supply. Um, even if I do get this supply back into what I would call working order, I don't think I'm going to add it to my repertoire of usable supplies. Um, I just don't think with all those different things on it, it's reliable. So when I test these, generally I, uh, generally I use a red bulb on the outlet that has been problematic. Um, that way, if it is stuttering, sputtering, not firing, Whatever, it, uh, we know which bulb it is. And in this case, we may not get our arcing and sparking until we put it back on the backing because it looks like some of that arcing was from the uh, extra piece of wire they added to the backing plate, which or it might have been when it actually failed, I, I'm not sure. But we'll run this uh, up the flagpole and see what we get here. Contact. Okay, that's moderately surprising. High and low power both work. Very surprising. I don't see anything angry flipping her on her side. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rapid rate wire just to really run this thing till the wheels fall off. Also keep in mind that you should never ever work on a power supply um, while it's still energized or within 15 minutes of it being energized. Um, but um, as I like to say, and uh, as, um, as uh, a lot of my teammates um, in our uh, one of our units, uh, tactical medical units, had written on their stuff. Um, F it, do it live. So we're going to do it live. Let me find a piece of gray wire. Not really necessary, but a lot of times I'll tin up the end of these uh, extra leads that I add um, ahead of time just to make the uh, process a little bit harder or easier, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Makes the wire a bit wider. But once you're through, it makes things go a lot easier. So. Let's see if I can not shock myself inserting this wire. All right, we are through. As in, it passed through the hole, not as in we are deceased, which is a better kind of through. Now, let's go ahead and take some uh, electrically conductive uh, metal uh, forceps and bend it down. See if we can't just scare the bejesus out of ourselves while we do that. And... Oh, 
Also, I don't want to see any comments about my soldering skills. Um, I, like, it's not polite to tell someone they're bad at something that they already know they're bad at. So, yeah, I know I'm not great at it. So, thanks. That was way too big a section of wire to run through there, but since this is a rat rod power supply at this point anyway, I'm not really going to sweat it. Okay, we are going to call that good. And now we're going to flip the beast back over without shocking ourselves or with shocking ourselves. I don't, it doesn't really matter at this point. Let's see if we can firmly tangle our web here. And before I go putting a male pin on the end of this gray wire, we will use it as is. See if we get that desired El Rapido rate. Okay, no Arky, no Sparky, that's good. Oh, and the Rapido rate works. So we'll go ahead and throw a male pin on the end of that gray wire, which of course is slightly the wrong length for the uh, plug, which is a tradition with rat rod power supplies like this one. And then we will bolt the whole freaking thing back to the chassis and see if it starts sparking and arcing, which probably... Again, I don't really like the giant hole burnt in the board. Like, that doesn't bode well for the power supply overall. I'm not really sure, other than the bad ground and the short to ground at the uh, initial power uh, supply area. But regardless, we're good. Time to put her back together, I guess, right? That is a lot of burn marks. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, one of the burn marks is like square over the... Uh, square over where the one outlet was and that outlet was clearly uh clearly not making the best contact in the world so i'm not really that worried about that one but the one over the area where they added wire to bypass the bad solder track I'm really, really, really hoping that it was the bad circuit board solder track that caused the uh, the charring, if you will, and not their fix. Because if it was their fix, uh, once we button this up, we're going to start Arky Sparky again, which I'm sure everyone would, would make everyone's day complete, but... I'd rather it not happen since I just got this working and added the infamous rapid rate. So 
Another mistake you don't want to make with these is you don't want to forget to reconnect the uh, MOSFET. Um, you've got four screws holding the power supply chassis down, and then you've got your uh, and then you got your MOSFET, which is a screw and a nut, and you that that is really what puts the uh, puts the MOSFET in proper contact with uh, with the chassis of the device, which is how it sheds heat. We can bust out the right size socket, or we can put needle nose pliers on it and risk arcing something, which we're good. So now, with it back on chassis, let's fire this bad boy up. See if we arky sparky now. Not yet. No arky sparky. Rapido rate. Full rapido. So this one works. We got lucky or it was all skill. Either way, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.